Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the project. I'm Dan H and today we're going to do a cool and flush on this 1998 ZJ with the 4.0. Uh, we're going to flush all the coolant and hopefully we're going to be able to clean out that heater core because it's been making that nasty gargling sound since I got it. Yep, that gargling noise has been driving me crazy. It's been doing that ever since I got this ZJ. And also, I believe the coolant in this system is disgusting. If you remember from my VIC video, I changed out the coolant bottle and that was disgusting inside as well. Oh. That's gross. I'm gonna, oh man, look at this. You see that junk in there? Oh, that's terrible. So we're gonna empty and flush out all the components of the cooling system. We're gonna empty the radiator, we're gonna empty the engine block, we're gonna empty the coolant bottle, and most importantly, I wanna flush out that radiator really well. Uh, once that's done, we're gonna install a thermostat and thermostat gasket, and uh, hopefully when we're done, we'll have a nice air-free cooling system with no bubbling, no gurgling, and maybe I'll actually get some hot air circulating through these vents. So, um, yeah, let's take a look at all the parts we're gonna need to get started. All right guys, so for this project, we're gonna use a thermostat. This is part number 52001195. This is the temperature of the thermostat. It's actually inside the part number, which is cool. Uh, it's a Motorrad, I got this from Advanced Auto Parts, and 195, again, is the temperature. Uh, these four O's, well, you're gonna need a four O to do this cool and flush also, but uh, the operating temperature of these Jeeps is about 200 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna get a thermostat that's just about close to that. Sometimes people overheat and they throw in thermostats that are much cooler, like 160 or 180, but that's not a good idea to do because you want the Jeep or your vehicle to run really close to its operating temperature because it performs more efficiently. Now, if you're having an overheating problem, uh, chances are it is not the thermostat that's the issue, it's something else. So you might wanna dig in deeper to solve that problem and not just go ahead and do a thermostat swap that, uh, that won't give you the right temperature. So we got the thermostat, we have the thermostat gasket, this is a Felpro, it is a 35024. And coming down here, we got a baby pool. Now this is gonna catch most of the splashing, but I got a bucket to catch the direct drippings. <laughs> uh, I got a funnel, you're probably gonna need a funnel. Um, here is my coolant. I'm going with the regular concentrated formula. Now usually you would mix this up 50-50 with, uh, with your water, um, but not many people know that you can actually mix this to uh, a higher concentration. So I'm gonna probably mix this closer to a 70% antifreeze, 30% water, just because it can handle more extreme temperatures. So we'll see how I do on the mixing. Um, I got a lot more than I need uh, to compensate for any spillages or any mess ups, which is always a good chance I'm gonna do. And it's easier to have more than less. And uh, I'll have some extra, so that's pretty cool. And here we go, we got some distilled water. Now you want distilled because regular water, a tap water, it has minerals, it could clog things up. So yeah, distilled water is what you're gonna want. Um, if you don't wanna buy water, you could distill water yourself. You take a big pot of water, you boil it, You collect all the vapors and a collector, and then you have it cooling in a condensing tube, which is usually just a bunch of coils of copper, and then you have it drip down into a pan. Uh, you could do that. Um, <laughs> uh, it's probably a lot harder than just buying these, so buy some distilled water. <laughs> um, we're gonna use some hose water to do all the flushing, and I don't know, I got some tubing in this pump just in case I need to pump out some liquids, so yeah, we're gonna get started. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is drain this sucker, and uh, we're gonna get that, uh, we're gonna get that radiator hose, and we're gonna open that up, let it drip, and we're also gonna drip from the petcock. I don't think you can see it. It's usually down here. We're gonna open that up and let that drip too. All right, let's do it. All right guys, here we go. I'm underneath the vehicle and the first thing I gotta do to access everything from the bottom is to remove this little shroud. Uh, the XJs don't have it, so 
lucky you X-Shay guys. Uh, it just pops off, drips in your face a little bit. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and use two hands. All right, there we go. That annoyance is out of the way. And this is the pet cock. We're gonna give this a nice counterclockwise turn once I get a bucket under here. And over here on the driver's side is the lower radiator hose. Now I'm gonna take this off by undoing this screw on the hose clamp and I'm gonna pull this off, let this drip into the bucket. Uh, <laughs> when you put the hose clamp on, see if you can do it from the top because this is gonna be a real pain in the butt to try to take this off. Probably gonna have to use a eight millimeter socket or something. So uh, I'll get this off and I'm gonna drain everything out. And this, guys, is why people lift their trucks. <laughs> I need a shorter bucket. Well, <laughs> that's disturbing. I got the pet cock out and nothing has dripped from this radiator. Uh, it's probably so gummed up it won't come out the bottom. Let me relieve some air pressure. <laughs> what is going on in here? All right, here we go. Able to get this hose clamp off like this. Oh, there we go. Start my leak on me already. Good, what a relief. Glad there was some coolant in here. Yep, every time. I feel you, Matt. <laughs> uh, too bad I didn't have chicken water in this one. It might have tasted a little better. But yep, this stuff does taste a little bit sweet, and that's why animals drink it and die, so don't leave this stuff around. Dispose of it properly. You know that old rap. Ugh. That sucked. All right, so here's a couple of these empty containers I had from when I did my Commander coolant flush. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pour the coolant right into here. And uh, it looks like about maybe two gallons, maybe a little less. And I'll get rid of this stuff right away. All right, now I'm just going to pump out the coolant in the coolant reservoir. Um, I know this stuff is pretty clean. I just... Uh, filled it up but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of everything and put all new stuff in new fresh cool And there we go, coolant bottle, nice and empty. And it's still clean in there, so that's nice. Okay, on to the heater core. We're gonna do a heater core flush now. All right, so now I'm gonna start disconnecting some of these heater core hoses. Uh, this tube comes right out of the thermostat housing, goes down along here, and it goes into the heater core, right on the side closer to the middle, goes to the heater core, circulates water through the fins, that's what gives you the hot air. Uh, then the water or the coolant comes out. And it goes back into this tube. This tube actually goes down towards the uh, water pump area. So, um, all right, we're gonna disconnect this tube and this tube, and we're gonna blast 
the hose through this tube so it comes out the in. This way, if there's any blockages, it won't push the blockage further in, it'll push it back out, hopefully. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. And um, you know what, after that, maybe I'll just disconnect this upper radiator hose and then I can get to the thermostat. All right, so I'm gonna start disconnecting some hoses. All right, this one goes into the heater core. This was a hose clamp, used a screwdriver for that. And this one, this one's like a stock, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? It's a compression clamp? I don't know. Uh, just give that a squeeze, slide it down, and the return. There. Now the return is off. All right. Going to blast water into here, and then we'll catch it coming out of here. All right, so I got my hose looped up over the mirror and down through the hood. It's gonna take some tension off the hose and I'm gonna blast it uh, in through the out. And I took my inlet hose and I was gonna catch it in the bucket up here, but it just wasn't long enough. So I'm just dropping this right down and I'm gonna catch it all in the baby pool. And one other thing, guys, when you're up in here and you're flushing, try not to uh, soak your distributor. Kind of splash a little bit, but I was mindful to keep it uh, out of the way of direct uh, saturation. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and flush out the radiator. I'm going to give it a nice blast, and hopefully it'll flush out all the nasty crap that's blocking the petcock. All right, guys, well, that wasn't an exact science, but it did the job. I just kind of indexed my finger to where the hole was, lined up the hose, blasted it full speed until the chunks came out of the lower radiator hose outlet of the radiator. Uh, kept doing that till uh, all the water ran clear, and uh, I'm pretty sure I got the clog out. Now uh, we'll get some tools to take off thermostat housing. All right. Take off the upper radiator hose. <laughs> these things were not put on in an accessible manner. <laughs> uh, when you put these back together, or whenever you're putting a hose clamp on, always be mindful of the direction the head is facing. This way you can access it again uh, when it's time to take it apart. So just make sure you uh, twist it or rotate it so whatever direction you can get a screwdriver on. Come on, baby. You won't have to suffer. <laughs> All right. There we go. Upper radiator hose is off. And I'm gonna go ahead and take off this coolant sensor. Just push the clip in, that slides right out. Easy peasy. Now, I'm gonna get to the radiator, I mean, what is this, the thermostat housing bolts. Uh, the top one, easy as pie. It's a 13 millimeter. <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> Fan shroud's in the way. It's a lot different than the uh, XJ. XJ has much easier access at the bottom and at the top. Right, let's try this again. Ha! Skunked again. Oh, skunked again. All right, I've been going about this all wrong. I blame myself. We need total surprise, an airborne attack. This beast will never expect it. <sighs> We've been going about this all wrong. I blame myself. <sighs> we need total surprise, an airborne attack. The beast will never expect it. Ooh. 
I'm gonna change the game. I'm gonna switch from a uh, 13 millimeter socket to uh, this uh, ratcheting wrench here. And I'm gonna see if I can put this on the head and make sure it's not loosened. Ah, there we go. That's it. Now it's coming off. All right, it's much better doing it this way. You just come right down and there we go. Just enough room to clear the fan shroud. We're gonna go and take this off, just like this. There we go. That was the first one. All right, guys, I got the upper housing bolt out, and now to get to the lower one, which you can barely see it, it's, it's under here uh, I'm gonna have to loosen up the belt so to do that I'm just gonna loosen up the belt pulley right down there and then I'm going to take the tension off with this bolt up here all right that pulley loosens up nice and easy with the 15 millimeter and so does this tensioner bolt Another 15 millimeter. There we go. That's loosening up rather nicely. Hey guys, remember that time last year when I was taking apart Beach Jeep and I snapped <laughs> this bolt? It's also 15 millimeter. Wow, corrosion and rust suck. Uh, good old rust. All right, so now that I got the tension off of the belt, I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, swiveling socket wrench with a 13 millimeter deep dish to go ahead and get on that bolt. Um, also, I'm gonna use this, this long uh, closed end box wrench, and I'm gonna push or pull on the edge of this to line this up uh, against the tension of the belt to where this needs to go on the head of the bolt. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, that worked. Let me show you what I did. All right, so I used this box wrench to push down on the socket to get it right on the top of the head of that bolt. And now I could loosen it. Oopsie. All right, got it. Look at that, it worked. There we go. So here's the housing. Nice and filthy, gonna clean this up. Gonna clean up the surface area where the gasket mounts to. Uh, here is the old gasket. It is stuck onto the head. Looks like the, uh, looks like they use a little bit of uh, RTV to stick that on. That's cool, I'll probably do the same thing. And this thermostat is looking gross. I'm glad I'm putting a new one on. Yeah, there it is. Yuckies. And we could see that the old thermostat was a 195, so that's good. I'm glad the correct thermostat was in here. Um, goodbye old thermostat. <laughs> all right, once you remove your thermostat, it is very important that you clean up all your surfaces, not just the thermostat housing surface, but you want to clean up the surface of the head in here. You want to get off any residue or any old gasket sealer. You want to make sure that nothing will prevent a good stick for your next gasket. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the surface, and then I'm going to flush out the engine. All right, now I'm going to flush the last part of the cooling system, the engine block itself.
right guys, I'm gonna use the wire wheel to clean up the surface uh, for the gasket. I'm gonna do it on the thermostat housing and I'm gonna do it on the, uh, the head down there. Um, whenever you're using a wire wheel, it's a great idea to use glasses because man, you do not wanna get a metal bristle in your eye. So <laughs> let's do this. Gonna go ahead and clean off where the hose mounts also. All right, there's just a couple spots I couldn't get to with my uh, wire brush on the drill. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the scraper. Nice and easy. Don't wanna gouge anything. Wanna keep it smooth. I'm just gonna gently scrape the surface. And yeah, here we go. Gonna get ready to put the thermostat in. All right guys, I'm ready to put the new thermostat in. The mounting surface is clean and dry. And again, this is a Moto Rad 5200 and 195 for the temperature. We're just gonna open this up and we're gonna see that this is a 195. Um, you know what? Going over this, <laughs> there is no uh, little safety valve. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill a small one eighth inch hole, maybe even smaller, just so I could let some uh, pressure out or uh, water through in case this ever fails. All right, here is my hole. It's actually a 764th. So that's the hole I drilled. Uh, it was really easy. I just rested this on a block of wood and popped it right through. Uh, this is thick enough to where it didn't warp, so uh, it worked out really good. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little RTV and just gonna use this as kind of like a glue. I don't really need a gasket because uh, it came with a gasket, so I'm not gonna seal this up. I'm just gonna wipe this on like a glue so I could stick this in place and let it hold where I need to hold while I jostle around the thermostat housing when I put it all back together. I'm just gonna wipe a little bit, very thin, very even, right on the inner lip, just like so, and Gonna be very careful not to block the hole I just drilled. All right, that looks good. All right, let me bring it in as close as I can so you can see what's going on in there. All right, here we have the opening for the thermostat. It's right in the head, and you can see that little groove. That little groove is right where the thermostat hooks into. So um, I'm just gonna put it in, and it should click on right in place. So. Pardon me, I'm using one hand to get this on and one hand to hold the camera. Let's see what I could do here. There we go. I set that in just like so. And there's my hole at the top. You want the hole as close to 12 o'clock top center as you can get it. This way uh, any air will pass through. <laughs> this way uh, you can have this flow a little bit even though the thermostat is closed. Uh, another thing is you want to make sure you put this in the correct way. Uh, the spring and all that nonsense goes inside the head because the way this works is this is closed so you have no water coming out of your engine circulating through the radiator and what happens when it's in this state is the coolant circulates through the engine, uh, it gets nice and hot, the spring expands and then it opens up and then the coolant circulates through the radiator. So uh, yeah, this is again 195, operating temperature is 200 to 210 degrees and if this works, uh, everything should be running nicely. So we got this seated very level, very flush and now we're gonna put the gasket on the cap and close it all up. All right, here is our thermostat gasket and again, it's a Felpro number 35024. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Don't rip your gasket. Rip the package. I should have a knife for this. There we go. This is just a thin paper gasket. Some gaskets, uh, I'm not sure what they're made of, but they have a sticker that you peel off and stick on. This one doesn't. Uh, it's Felpro, I like Felpro, so I'm sticking with it. Uh, but what I will do is, ah. But what I will do is I'm gonna lay a little bit of RTV on it just to get it stuck on like a glue. Again, I'm not using RTV as a gasket because I have a gasket.
All right, there we have it. It's clean and dry with a very thin, even layer of RTV. And I'm going to go ahead and mate the gasket on. Okay. Just going to line up the holes as best as possible. Brush off any dirt or junk. Now I get to put this on. Woohoo! All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the smaller bolt, which is the lower bolt, in the housing first. And then I'm going to gently, carefully line this up because I do not want to knock the thermostat out of its, uh, its little home. <laughs> you do not want to misalign the thermostat if it uh, drops down on you and you tighten it up. You can um, have the thermostat lip actually block the gasket and uh, then it won't seal. Then you'll be leaking out of the bottom and you won't know why. That's not good for anybody. Try to reach around, line this up, trying to hand tighten this just to get it in the proper orientation. All right, top one's in, a little bit firm. Now back to the bottom. And again, to get to the lower bolt, I just slid this socket wrench through this uh, closed end socket and tightened it down uh, using this to steer around the bolt. <laughs> so that worked really well. And uh, now I'm not sure the torque specs, but um, I'm just gonna go back and forth, rotating between the top bolt and the bottom bolt, just snugging them on. Don't wanna over tighten and you don't wanna strip it. All right, I'm gonna start buttoning up all these pipes and hoses, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this petcock plug with a little bit of Teflon tape, just once around. Uh, got this tip from Doug, he is the man. Thank you, brother. I never ever thought of doing this, but just a little Teflon tape around the threads to make it easier to come off, because this is plastic. You don't want to put tools on this thing and snap it off. It's a plastic. You want it to be coming off hand tight. So that's on there. Um, I'm gonna button up all these hoses and then we'll start the refill. All right guys, this is what I was talking about before. When you tighten on your hose clamps, you wanna make sure you position them in a way so you can take them back off again once everything is back on your vehicle. You wanna make sure they're easily accessible so you don't bust your knuckles or strain yourself trying to get a, a screw or a socket on these heads. So tighten them back up and keep them clear and free of obstructions. All right guys, so what I did right there was I flipped the ZJ around. Now, I didn't say this before, but um, just so you know, I parked on the edge of my driveway with the nose facing downhill, so the coolant better flushes out of the system. Now that it's time to refill everything, I went ahead, flipped the car around, and now the engine is uphill. So all the water and coolant goes into the back where it should be. Um, I only ran this for about 10 seconds, so it's not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna overheat it. You can start it just for a little bit, enough to position the vehicle where you need it. So, uh, time to fill this sucker up. All right guys, so here's how I'm gonna mix my coolant. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Um, you can see right here that if you do it 70% antifreeze and 30% water, you can do uh, minus 84 degrees Fahrenheit and plus 276 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, that's plenty for me right now. I think that's good. It might be a little bit more uh, sturdier than the regular 50-50 mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in uh, two gallons of the antifreeze and one gallon of the distilled water and I guess that should be uh, I don't know, 33 plus 33 66 we'll do 66 percent antifreeze to 33 percent water um, good enough for me so I'm gonna fill this five gallon bucket with 
with my mix. And this is a great formula because the 4.0 takes about uh, three gallons of coolant. So there's my three gallons and um, I have more over there in case I need some more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into my containers very carefully with the funnel. There we go, and I didn't even spill too much, but either way, it's great I got this baby pool to catch any crap. So, let's put this gallon or so in the engine. All right, one other thing you wanna do is check your radiator cap. Uh, believe it or not, a radiator cap could cause you to overheat if it's not functioning properly. Um, I had a heck of a time with my Commander in that overheating video. If you wanna see me struggle, check out my uh, Commander overheating video in this card up here. Um, but yeah, uh, Definitely check your radiator cap, and uh, I got one with a uh, pressure release valve. This is always good to have. Um, <laughs> come to think of it, you should probably just swap out the cap too whenever you do this job. Uh, if you do it, you want to get a 16 uh, PSI cap, and uh, you want to make sure that it's compatible with the pressure of your coolant system. So this one's pretty good. I'm going to reuse it, and uh, I'm gonna grab my funnel and uh, fill this up. I'm just going to want to take this nice and slow because this stuff will bounce right out of the top. Just like that. So nice and easy. Fill her up. All right, my first gallon of coolant is in. Um, now, water tries to seek its own level. So as the coolant level in the radiator rises, uh, so shall it rise too inside the engine block. So uh, it's gonna keep going up and down, back and forth as I fill, and it's gonna release air and start gargling out here. So I'm gonna start on my second gallon and uh, we'll see how much of that it takes inside the radiator. All right, that's gargling over. Um, good thing I got that baby pool down there, catching any spillage. And now I think I'm gonna go over to the heater core outlet hose and just try to add some coolant into the heater core. Um, that might save me some trouble uh, burping the system with the engine running. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna take this off again. <laughs> In case you were wondering, guys, yeah, I buttoned up everything. I put all the hoses back on so I could uh, drive this thing up the driveway. And uh, yeah, that's all, uh, it's all good. Everything's back together. Come on, hose. <laughs> Come on, hose. <laughs> this is not a ludicrous song. Use a hose. I said that use a hose. <laughs> all right, let's see if it takes anything in here. All right, I got it to the point where it's coming out of the uh, other part of this tube. <laughs> so perfect. I'm gonna remake my connection. All right, awesome guys. We got about two gallons of coolant in the system right now, and I'm gonna add some of the third gallon into the overflow tank, into the coolant reservoir. Okay, she's up to the fill line. Let's uh, let's start her up. All right, so far so good. No leaks out of the thermostat housing. Awesome. And uh, this water pump looks new. That's pretty sweet. Never realized it. New water pump in the ZJ. Co General Grievous. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna top off this radiator a little bit. Add some more fluid.
Nice. The general is drinking. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this up and let this thing get nice and hot. All right, guys, I've been running the CJ for about 20 minutes now. It's nice and hot. It's up at operating temperature. Uh, what I did was I cranked up the heat. I put it on full blast and full defrost so it's not blowing in the camera. So yeah, this thing is running nice and hot. We got all the coolant circulating. I think we did a good job topping it off, and making sure there's no air bubbles trapped inside. And I'm just gonna keep this thing running, keep everything circulating. I'm gonna top off the coolant as needed. But just make sure you never open the radiator cap when it's hot, it'll blow up in your face. You don't want that, that's bad. But right now I'm gonna go under the hood and show you a trick that I've learned to make sure all the air is out of the heater core to eliminate that gargling once and for all. All right, let's do it. All right guys, here's my trick to get every last molecule of air out of the heater core. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the hose that exits the heater core, it's the one to the outside, and we're gonna remove this clamp, slide it down and out of the way. All right, so the engine is hot and it's running, so this hose will be hot. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab it and you're going to slide it down just to the edge of the outlet. And it's going to take a steady hand. You don't want to pull this hose off because that will introduce air back into the system. You don't want that. You want to carefully drag the hose down just to the point where it's about to fall off, but not letting it fall off. Okay, so now we got the hose teetering on the edge. You're gonna hold it in place with one hand and you're gonna drill a teeny tiny little hole right on the lip of the hose. So here we go. We're gonna carefully drill this tiny little hole almost at the end of the hose and we're gonna be very, very careful not to puncture all the way through to the bottom half of the hose, just the top half of the hose at the 12 o'clock position. see it's immediately spraying hot coolant all over the place uh, it is hot um, don't burn yourself now <laughs> maybe I should wear gloves but uh, we're gonna uh, let this leak out we're gonna, we're gonna let all the air leak out of this as well so that's a good thing uh, give it a couple seconds then we're gonna push this thing back closed <laughs> all right so now we're sliding the hose back onto the outlet and uh, we're gonna push this little hole that we made way past the edge of the tube, the outlet tube, and now we're going to put the uh, hose back on. It's gonna stop the leaking. The hole will be way, way up there. You'll never have to worry about it leaking. It's gonna be all right. Trust me, uh, as long as you didn't drill through anything you're not supposed to. I'm gonna get this back on. All right, but now we're gonna put on our hose clamp once again. Still no leaks, everything's cool. Alright, and uh, wipe everything down. It's uh, it's definitely burning off a little bit of that sprayed coolant. It's it's a messy, messy job, but it uh, gets the job done. Absolutely no air in the system, I guarantee it. So uh, that's it, that's my trick. Alright guys, sorry about the darkness. Uh, it's night now. <laughs> but moment of truth, here we go. Well, all right, guys. So since you got a new intro, you're getting a new outro. That's going to be a wrap for my ZJ coolant flush and thermostat change video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you pick up a trick or two. Um, this thing has been running for, what did I say, about a month now, 30 days. <laughs> and it's been awesome. It's been cool. The heat's been blowing hot. And the best part is no gurgling sound. Check this out. Moment of truth. No gurgles, no gurgles. <laughs> so, yeah, 
that's a wrap guys remember to stay tuned for the next video uh, I'm gonna do a special fundraiser video uh, hopefully we'll raise some funds for the uh, project XJ that I have yet to unveil um, the timeline in this video um, it was me filming this coolant flush video uh, the day or the evening of uh, the bid I placed so uh, I placed a bid the night of this video and uh, well, let's just say it worked out in my favor. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next project. Peace. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to label your leftover mixed coolant as mixed. <laughs>